<laughs> Great. We didn't even get stuck. Things are starting to heat up at the cane field. Randy. Am I, am I doing this right? I love your new hat. <laughs> They are going to be so mad at us when we bring this van back. This isn't where I park my tractor. I'm here with Pipe Layer and Pipe Layer Junior and Millennial Junior. So right now we are in Bella Glade, Florida and we're actually going to go out. We've set up some stuff here with the Everglades Equipment Group. They set up a whole day for us to go out and see some farms. Unfortunately, it is raining a little bit right now, but it sounds like that's supposed to lighten up and hopefully we'll have a fun day here. I'm hoping we're going to see some sugarcane stuff going on. There's a lot going on south of town. Uh, I think maybe, I don't want to say too much because I don't know what they've got exactly for us. So, I don't know, stick around. You'll find out over the next 10 to 20 minutes. Right? Yeah. Let's do this. Any words of wisdom? No. No? Just have fun. Just, there you go. That's good. Have fun. So the difference between Florida rain and Minnesota rain is that in Florida the rain is liquid. Got to get them bouncing around back there. <laughs> uh -oh, that's, that's a little rough. <laughs> Where are we headed this time, guys? I, I don't know. All right. Sugarcane farm. Sugar farm is the plan. Uh, you bounce the back of the seat scrapes on my sunburn. I'll try to stop bouncing. Better do that. I think we're gonna get the van dirty. I think you're right. Now that's new. So this is a sugarcane farm right here. The stuff he's harvesting at the moment has been burned off to get rid of the extra trash and change the sugar content a little bit. He's going to wait for the wagons to come up here. This is busy. So they hooked me up. I ended up getting in one of these things. We call it a combine when it's corn. What, what do you call this? Cane oh, harvester? Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised at actually how similar this thing is to our combines at home. I mean, all the control panels and stuff over there look pretty well the same. They do one row at a time, so everything in front of me is quite a bit different, but this is awesome. I'm definitely going to wreck a pair of new Nikes today. What'd you think of that, Randy? Pretty cool. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Nothing like what we do. <laughs> you ever get alligators in the canals? Yes, all the time. You ever get alligators jammed in the sugarcane machines, the harvesters? I, I've not heard of one here in Fort Pierce. We did have one go into a forage harvester. Oh, what a mess. Oh, man. Don't get the case truck on video. <laughs> Just a tractor with a side cutter on the side. And they leave those ribbons. There's a guy stack in the middle. Yeah, two guys are standing on the back of the platform. They wouldn't let us take the van on the speedway yesterday, <laughs> so we were thinking if we could just rip some donuts in a sod farm, it would be cool. <laughs> yeah, now there's a field we recognize. They're going to be so mad at us when we bring this van back. <laughs> Randy, am I, am I doing this right? I love your new hat. <laughs> Can I still wear my hat over it? I don't know. You did, uh, you, he did. Yeah, he did, so that means yes. There you go. We're <laughs> doing. <laughs> yeah. Cutting the head right here, like this with this knife, and it's a special knife. When we flip the knife or flip the head over, we're taking the core out. And then throw it 
up on the belt here, gets a real quick wash. It's not really a, to wash off all the dirt, all that stuff. The main thing is, is, it's like when you cut a tree, you see these little latex, all that little white stuff coming out like glue. Yep. What we're trying to do is we're trying to stop it from coming out. So what we're doing is it's got a little salt water in there and it seals that wound. And it stops that, okay. And, it stops it. and then it gets up into here and gets dumped into one of these bins. Each one of these bins weighs anywhere between 800 and 1,000 pounds. And then we ship it up to a ramp, ship it up to the cooler, and they suck all the hot air out with a vacuum tube and drop it down to about 35 degrees. <laughs> all the way to the end of the field, then I'm guessing they come all the way back to this end. Yep. Then I bet you they go back to the other end again. They'll cut around 350 of those bins every day. Three crews, they're doing about 900 bins a day. Wow. That's a group of hardworking people right there. Holy cow. So after it's harvested here, the stuff we're standing on now, this is all left over, right? Yes. So so do you run tillage on it or what do you what do you do with what's we did, left we, here? We disc it right back into the soil. Okay. So yeah, we just we turn it in, disc, disc it right over and everything, and it just goes right back into the soil. It just kind of kind of adds back to it. We plant all of this four beds at a time. Right now we're currently running three planters to plant anywhere from seven to thousand seven to eight thousand acres a year. So he was saying the turnaround time on this, which is really difficult to walk on. A lot of times it's one day. This will go right to the facility that I think we're gonna go to, where sometimes they'll add a little bit of nitrogen gas to help preserve it, keep it from browning, and then it'll, it'll get turned around and sent to wherever this lettuce is going. So depending on the orders for the day, that will affect how many hours these people are out here working and harvesting to fulfill those orders for the day. So it sounds like every day is a little bit different. The diversity of agriculture and hairnets. You can't rush it in a lettuce field. You will go down. So this stuff is wet and it's really slippery, but it does not stick to your shoes. I wasn't exactly planning on these conditions. Neither was Randy. Now we are fertilizing sugar cane. And as they were explaining to us before, this sugar cane gets planted once and they get several crops out of it. I think I could run that tractor. Do you want me to teach you how to do this? Yeah, please. We learned earlier that sugar cane doesn't take any nitrogen. You don't apply, it takes nitrogen, you don't apply it because of how fertile the soil is here. Exactly. You said you're putting on what to me sounds like a really low rate of phosphorus and potash with some micronutrients. So it's, it was like a zero... 1140. Oh, 1140. 1140. So 11 pounds of phosphorus per acre mm -hmm. and 40 pounds of, of potash per acre. Yep. And then you'll come by and you'll somebody will come by and incorporate this into the soil. So we will cultivate it in the soil and and that would incorporate it. So with that and rainwater, it would activate really well and, and fertilizer. It gets off. there. Awesome. Yeah. It's not very wide, but it gets the job done. I notice you don't have any auto steer here. <laughs> you are the auto steer. I am the auto steer. You are the auto steer. I hate being the auto steer. It sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Who wants to work anymore? Yeah, I mean, if you got auto steer, you could be on Instagram the whole time. Exactly. You can make videos all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so how do you manage a YouTube channel if you don't have auto steer? You can't. You just can't. You gotta hire another person just to do it for you. Ridiculous. Yeah. Look at that. They've all gathered to cheer me on. I've this got a crowd. Awesome. This is awesome. They're so proud of me. Kinda look like those cowbirds, huh? <laughs> Duncan for lunch? <laughs> Eric, I came up a little hot at the end there, to be honest. Did you guys think I was going in the canal? <laughs> well, what, do you, what do you say, six to ten of those end up in a canal every year? Every year. Just about six to ten tractors. More tractors than we have <laughs> end up in the canal every year. Everybody got pretty quiet there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, Did you get it on video? oh this is when the YouTube channel ends. <laughs>
How many employees work for TKM, which is the, the farm that you're working for? So between the harvest operations, all the spray, the land prep, the, the receiving, the packing, the cooling, and all the handling, in, our, in the peak season, I'd say we're anywhere from seven to eight hundred ish employees. Seven to eight hundred. How many acres? How many acres of crop? With the double planting and everything, it can range from six to eight thousand acres, depending on uh, the so, type of contract that we're uh, planting and harvesting for. So it is. It's a lot of acres. A lot of acres. That's. But seven to eight hundred. This is you said. Uh, a type of lettuce? The, the yeah, so this is your spring mix blends. A lot of this will go uh, to Publix and stuff like that. Publix being the, the store. The supermarket. Like where we're from, yeah. nobody knows what a Publix is. Yeah, so yeah. yeah you know, it's, it just takes, it's so much manual hand labor. Yeah, it was, a, it compared was, it was to us. completely different. Even when I came down here from Michigan, it was, it was just amazing. <laughs> just to see the sugar cane and the amount of it for the first time was, right. it was just kind of left you in awe. It's nuts. Cane truck. The cane, yeah, cane will start about October harvesting. Cane truck. Cane truck. So there. Yeah, right there. Jeez. So this is not the only plant, right? This isn't where all the cane is going. No, this is a this is a co-op. There's several several other plants in the area. Randy, did you enjoy your lunch? I did. It was it was awesome. It was Cuban. I enjoyed it as well. And now we finally get to go see. A sugarcane field catch on fire. Is anyone else excited about seeing a sugarcane field burn? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> if you want to go on vacation with the Millennial Farmer family on a cruise in August to Alaska, the link is in the description. Right on! He nailed it. He nailed it. We're gonna well, we're gonna go. It's actually an. Oh yeah, it's not a, it's not a cruise, but it's a, an Alaska vacation. We're gonna be going to a musk ox farm. We're going to be going to a dairy farm. We're going to see Denali National Park. We're going to see the Iditarod Trail, the Alaskan State Fair. It's going to be fun. It's all organized and orchestrated through... Uh, all... <laughs> what is that thing? Red things. What was that? <laughs> we won't see any of that on the vacation. We won't put you guys through that. And a hundred different airports, so no matter where you're at, you can figure it out. Link is in the description. MNMillennialFarmer.com Have we rambled enough about it? I think so. All right. They have different woods on the edges of their fields. Get your mind out of the gutter, Randy. Grow up. Rerouting. Okay, I'm gonna, All right, whip it, Becky. I'm gonna go up that way and then back right here to not get stuck. Oh, if we get stuck, it'll, I mean, the viewers would love it. What do you <laughs> Great. We didn't even get stuck. <laughs> what is this thing? It's, uh, it's a machine. It's a transporter of So we got a burn, we got a cornfield, and an alligator facility. Terrarium. An alligator terrarium. She's crackling. All right, Randy, come here. Explain why they're burning the sugarcane. <laughs> You're my sugarcane master for the day. <laughs> well, they're burning the sugarcane to burn the bottom leaves off, I believe, yep. so that it's easier to harvest, and there's not so much waste going through the processing plant. It's not so hard on the equipment, and the bottom leaves aren't. There's, there's no. They're no good. There's no value to them. There's not sugar in them, so they get rid of them. Get rid of the excess residue. That way they're left with the stock, which is the piece that they want to harvest. Then they bring it into the processing facility. It's more efficient for them. Yep. They can harvest it without burning it, but they prefer to burn it. Right? Am I right? Did I nail it? There's nobody standing behind the camera. <laughs> it's getting a little bit closer. Things are starting to heat up at the cane field. But that corn is beautiful, Randy. It's fun seeing a green cornfield in the middle of the winter. So this tractor here is actually lighting this corner on fire so they've, they've got a bit of a back burn against what's burning behind him. Essentially what he's doing is he's bringing the heat. <laughs> <laughs> 
It amazes me how green this stuff is and the fact that it actually does burn. Right. Serious question coming from a Minnesotan. You have a lot of gators around. So when you're working around out here, are you nervous about like stepping on an alligator or I think Or do they kind of leave you alone because they're too stupid to know any better? Well, I think Floridians fear gators the way Minnesotans fear bears and any other that type of wildlife. I'm scared of death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, we don't have bears around us, so yeah, that's terrifying. Okay. That's his only job is to not back up. <laughs> We'll get, we'll get it's getting <coughs> kind of smoky here, Randy. We better get back to the smoking. the creepy uncle van. I think so if you guys want to come with us on vacation to Alaska, you won't see anything like that. But there might be a polar bear. He gave out hats. Where's my hat? Did you see that red harvester? Here's a hat. You get a hat. I'm here with David Goodlett with Sugar Cane Growers Cooperative. We are standing in the middle of 50 Brazilian tons of sugar right now. Yes, we have five sugar warehouses and this one holds 160,000 tons. 160,000 tons. That we will use to supply our refineries. Uh, the most famous of which label is probably Domino. And they're in Yonkers, New York and Baltimore, Maryland. We are the largest distributor of value-added sugar products in the world. We have world. facilities all over the United States and in Europe and Mexico and other locations. For the people wondering out there, and, and I'm wondering as well, why are the children allowed to climb on it? It always has to be refined. So it's cheaper and less expensive to ship the sugar in bulk like we do on barges through the eastern seaboard in the Atlantic Ocean in bulk. And then when you get it to your end user, Hang on, then, then you repackage it into one of hundreds of products that is value added. But the key is if we put it in bags here, it would be very costly to ship. This way we do it in bulk, then we then we process it into, into the trip. Yeah. Okay. Now I didn't ask for permission and I I might get yelled at for doing this, but it appears as though there's a snow sugar blower down here, so I'm I'm going this direction. Will I get in trouble? Maybe. That that's incredible. I had brought a spoon. Molly, what? did you get the sugar dumped out of your shoes? Yep. All right, now where are we going? Um, I we don't know. To a lettuce processing Lettuce plant. packaging. Where they process lettuce. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh. Let us have fun. <laughs> So these boxes here are the ones that came right off the field that we saw earlier. They're all labeled by the lot number on the stickers they put on out there. They're all pathogen tested and then sent through the computer here and recognized by the computer. If they're not recognized, they can't be individually wrapped up or boxed up and sent out of here. So that's what's going on back here. Currently today, the temperature about 60 degrees. We can bring the uh, internal temperature of the produce down to about 35 degrees and around 20, 25 minutes. Say this is very, very well organized chaos. There's more coolers over here. It's madness. So Onyx said he was uh, cold outside because it was 65 and windy. What's the temperature in here? 45? 35. Did this help warm you up? No. He's not happy about it. Well, who wears shorts to a lettuce facility? Oh, yesterday it was 90 degrees. Oh, Minnesotans. Hey look, more boxes of lettuce. 
All right, we're done at the lettuce facility. Now we're we're back to Everglades Bring equipment. Final stop. Isla needs a new tractor. Isla, do you need any new machinery? New tractor? New combine? She needs a wet 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 wipe. For her. A wet wipe to get the sugar <laughs> off her face. Oh, that's a good donut. Just kids equipment shopping. I know what I want. You do? Well, right before Christmas this last year, I got a box in the mail from Everglades Equipment Group, and it turns out that Mike from Everglades Equipment, up the road at a different location, is a fan, and sent me a box of shirts, sent Isla a tractor. Um, when I found out we were coming down to Florida for vacation, I got in touch with Everglades Equipment, and they set me up with this whole tour, everything we did here today. Nothing was sponsored. This was just a fun day to get out on the farms and see what happens here in South Florida because I know there's a lot of agriculture out here. So I have to say thank you to Everglades Equipment Group and also TKM Vanguard Farms, Sugar Cane Growers Cooperative, U.S. Sugar, Wedgwood Farms, and Florida Crystals to all the people involved here. Um, Allie, who is standing right there staring at me doing it. She didn't want to be on camera. And Caroline standing right there. Those two, I know, were behind the scenes organizing this whole deal. So thank you to you guys, and thank you to everybody I mentioned. This has been a ton of fun. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Enjoyed it. And we picked a perfectly beautiful, sunny, dry Florida day.